What's up, buddy? How you doing? It's been a while. It's been a while. I've got a lot going on in my life. Uh, and frankly, there hasn't been a lot to talk about. It's been hard to find things. Uh, I think everybody's been busy. Holidays are finally over. Everybody's getting back at the swing of things. But I've been waiting for some good news. But thankfully, I don't know if this is, I mean, this is something we knew was going to happen. But for some reason, I am excited, tentatively excited, for the new Ant-Man movie. I know it's I'm supposed to call it Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I'm a misogynist. Let's be real. It's Ant-Man. It's the Wasp. I don't like the Wasp that much, but I love Paul Rudd. Obviously, Quantumania. As somebody pointed out to me, the words Ant-Man are in Quantumania. I don't know why they don't highlight that and like make them different colors. Anyway, uh, first we got this new poster. Let's see. Can we get big? Can we see that nice and big? Featuring, again, Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly, and also now his kid is an Ant-Man, too. Too many ant people. Fine. And they're going to go into the world underneath the world, the microverse or whatever, a uh, whole universe within worlds, which is actually kind of cool. I like that idea. And, of course, the bad guy is Kang the Conqueror, who we met in the Loki show. And we're finally going to find out a little bit about what's Kang's deal, man? Because in Loki, we're like, this is a weird guy. I don't even know what he wants. He's like a time master. Uh, what's his end goal? What is he trying to accomplish? And a lot of the ways they've been talking about it are some of the scenes that have been teased make it sound like this guy has killed the Avengers, I don't know, a thousand times before. This is just another time, uh, another spin around the wheel for him. That's not a saying. That's another spin around the wheel. Another, another go around on the horse. Somebody give me a better metaphor. Another go around on the wheel. Anyway, what we got a trailer here, folks. Uh, now this trailer, real quick, hold on. Uh, debuted tonight. I believe it was tonight, right? January. Oh, this was yesterday. So this which debate debuted during the college football playoff national championship. Somebody told me the game was a blowout, so everybody stopped watching the game and missed the trailer because by halftime it was already over. But I have not watched it. I have saved it for you, my 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 viewers, my loyal Vito Nation. If you're just joining us, don't forget, click that button, subscribe to the channel, and let's take a look. This is a two-minute trailer, two minutes, 18 seconds. Kind of long for a trailer. You're an interesting man, Scott Lang. Oh, you know what YouTube's doing? They're going, you want to watch it in 720p, right? No, 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 no. Give me the 1080. Give me the 1080. Come on, baby. You're an Avenger. You have a daughter. But you've lost a lot of time. Like me. We can help each other. With okay, so we saw this scene in the previous trailer, and I gotta say, I don't like this scene. The scene is basically his daughter going, Dad, I made a magic portal to the quantum realm. And then I think old wasp, the old lady goes, oh, you got to shut that portal down. I'm like, that's not really a good, <laughs> it's not a good explanation of how they get to the quantum realm. It's a little hokey. Your daughter's an idiot. And I, I think it does one of those things that I always hate is making one character the scapegoat for everything that goes wrong. Remember how, uh. What do you call it? And I didn't hate this as much, but a lot of people did. Remember when Peter Quill, you know, started beating up on Thanos and it caused him to uh, come back to his senses and was able to fight them off and snap and kill. And then everybody was blaming Peter Quill. They're like, well, yeah, that's your fault. If you had just uh, not tried to beat up Thanos, uh, you could have saved half the universe. And now I'm worried that it's going to be like, yeah, well, Cassie Lang, if she wasn't a dumb idiot uh, who built a portal without telling anybody and just switches it on, then none of the bad stuff in this movie would happen. So I think from a writing standpoint, if I'm getting too technical, try not to make one of your characters like the scapegoat for everything that goes wrong because it's going to be really hard, especially a new character, because now it's harder for the audience to like Cassie Lang because we're like, great, what an idiot. She got everybody trapped in the nightmare realm. Okay, that was a long segue. Let's take a look. Third. Who are you? I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. That effect looks really cheesy. That looks... That looks really bad. 
So they got it. Marvel's got to stop doing this thing where they like CG helmets on people after the fact. Uh, I we just saw what do you call it? Black Panther two, where she had uh, Iron Heart. The Iron Heart helmet is like clearly all CG. Just build this man a helmet with a glass shield. You could have a practical effect that makes it go away. That looks looks terrible. What's that? Time. This is cool. I, I like all this. Yeah, yeah, I like all this. You cannot trust him. I don't care who this I gotta say though, like this movie looks really cheap. It's being directed by Peyton Reed again, the guy who directed all the other Ammons, but it's just like look at these really flat shots. Like, they're not exciting angles. Wh whatever. I'm being way too nitpicky. It's him. I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much. He can give us a second chance. So it's kind of sounding like Kang is offering Ant-Man. Ant-Man, remember, got snapped and basically missed. How long was the snap for? How long did the snap last? Regardless, he missed his daughter growing up. Uh, and it sounds like he's offering him that back somehow. Like, hey, I, maybe I can send you back in time and you can experience growing up with it. But who cares? Like, I really hope that's not the plot. Let me make this easy for you. You will bring me what I need. Or everything you call life will end. Hold on. You'll bring me what? I, I gotta hear this guy again. Let me make this easy for you. You will bring me what I need. You'll bring me what I need. That's cryptic. Or cryptic. You call life I don't know what that means. Blend. What do you need, Kang? not want her to watch this. We had a deal. Okay, so that's MODOK. I don't know if you guys know MODOK <laughs> from uh, the Marvel Universe. Uh, but for those of you who have not seen MODOK, real quick, we'll bring up a picture of him. Uh, he's... <laughs> what a fucking stupid character. Uh, I, we kind of, kind of got to love how stupid he is. Well, that's a terribly small picture of him. There's Modok, uh, is finally making his true Marvel appearance. And, uh, we're getting this armored version of him, but I think we get to actually see him. Let's see. You thought you could win. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. Oh, that's like a million little ant men. That's kind of cool. This is like a million ant men, million Scott Langs all trying to make a little tower. That's neato. I'm sorry, Cassie. I mean, part of me, like, I wonder if it's a YouTube compression. These movies always, whatever, uh, YouTube's got to figure out it's uh, whatever's compressing these videos. Because I swear, they all look kind of like, mer like, if you pause it, you'll see. It's, like, very, like, almost fuzzy and not crisp. I can't even judge the actual quality of movies anymore. This is a problem we had with the She-Hulk trailer, where everyone's like, She-Hulk looks like shit, and then you saw it on actual TV and it looked fine. So YouTube's running these compression games with quality. Just, I mean, they're processing so much video, I get it. But it's become really hard to judge a movie's visuals based on YouTube. I should try to find trailers elsewhere because it just ends up like like smudged and like a little bit blurry. But I want to say, I mean, I don't know. Like, why does why do Marvel movies feel cheap now? Or it's like a mix. It's like some of it like this looks cool and all the like city stuff looks cool. All this like weird underground city. But then like the actual actors and the cinematography Looks like super cheap green screen trash. 
uh, and I don't know how to feel about it. Like, see, this probably looks awesome on YouTube. Again, it's compressed down to nothing. And you're, you guys are watching a compression of a compression, which is probably even more terrible. But I, I don't know. I just want it to look good. Uh, but ultimately, Ant-Man's always kind of been like a B franchise. It was never one of the big franchises. I think the, the, the humor hasn't been there. And that's going to be kind of a problem is going to this... Uh, like you want Ant-Man, it should be like one of the funnier entries. It's Ant-Man. It's a ridiculous premise. A guy who turns into a little thing. And it's always been cool. The, uh, the fights where he turns, shrinks down small and then they, you know, expand up a Tonka truck to be the size of an actual truck. Uh, but they can't do any of this in the quantum realm. You're not going to see a Tonka truck down here. So this is going to be like a very serious take on Ant-Man. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be interesting, but I don't know if that's what the audience really wants. I kind of am like, just make more stupid Ant-Man adventures. Marvel has this problem where it never, it, everything always ends up being so epic that there's never any time for like the fun adventures, you know, once they start building towards something. And right now they're obviously building towards Kang. So it has to be all epic and dramatic. Uh, and this trailer was all epic and dramatic. It was not a funny trailer, you know? I kept being like, Ant-Man, make it like a little joke. And it's like, no, it's going to be like a... I mean, obviously, he's going to have your Marvel quips in there. You're going to get all that. Uh, look, I mean, I'm going to see it. I'm, I can't say it's going to be bad, but it's definitely a darker tone than the previous Ant-Man movies. And I don't know if that's what audiences really want right now. I don't know if audiences want these kind of like dark superhero movies, especially from like Ant-Man. Like if I want a dark superhero movie, I'll go see Batman or I don't know, something along those lines, like an X-Men or something. But uh, Ant-Man, I just kind of want to have a goof around fun time with Paul Rudd. I really don't want to see him lose his teenage daughter or whatever the hell is going on here. We'll see. I also don't know how I feel about Kang as a villain. Uh, right now, he's not giving me anything. He's a guy... He's a guy. He's got some sort of crazy powers. Uh, he seems like kind of a jerk. We'll see. It could be interesting. Uh, but this feels like a, a breaking point for Marvel. This feels like Marvel really needs to prove where the hell it's going. Because that whole phase four, uh, I was like, oh, Multiverse of Madness. That'll tell us where we're going. Nope. Thor, Love and Thunder. No, that kind of... What, what did we get out of that movie? Thor has a daughter now who's not really his daughter. Uh, Marvel, you got to give us some sort of through line. Obviously, Kang is the big linchpin to your next phase. He's the next big Thanos type villain. So hopefully you guys sell it again. I don't want to come off as too negative. Some of this looks good. Um, but some of it also, I'm starting to get this, like every Marvel movie looks the same and I, I'm, I'm looking for like a unique vision or something. And I go, eh, it's kind of, I don't know, even, even this stuff. I mean, I'm excited about this microverse. But I'm worried, you know, again, like Multiverse of Madness, we really thought it was going to get wacky. We thought we were going to see all these different multiverses and all these crazy visuals, and they really only went to one or two places. I'm worried this whole microverse, we're going to see like one cool city, and then they're not really going to explore it nearly as much as I would like them to. We'll see what happens. But guys, let me know what you think. Are you excited for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania? Was that a good trailer? I don't think that's going to really bring people into the box office because it didn't really tell us what the big hook is. It just was a little too dramatic for its own good. I think showing people like, hey, this is going to be fun. It's going to be funny. Uh, maybe maybe would have been a better tack to take. I don't know if people really care so much about, oh, there's an evil Kang guy and a MODOK, and I don't know what any of this is. It was like a little too dramatic, a little too serious. And I worry that moviegoers aren't really looking for that right now. Let me know if I'm crazy. Tell me in the comments. We got more cool videos coming soon. And uh, take care of yourself, man. Veto Nation. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button. I love you.